Magandang hapon, Malacanang Press Corps. Narito si Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, Unang-una, uh, I suppose you've heard, nag-issue na po kami ng announcement na ang trabaho at saka pasok sa lahat ng level uh, in the public sector ay suspendido na po today and tomorrow. Uh, sa, pa, sa pribadong sektor, base yun doon sa discretion ng employers. Okay. Pero rekomendado na isuspindi na rin. Uh, bukod pa dito, kanina nag-cabinet meeting kami ng alas 9 ng umaga. Ang nag-report po ng priority programs and projects, uh, ang Department of Migrant Workers at saka Department of Labor and Employment. Sa Department of Migrant Workers, nagpresenta po sila ng mga plano ukol doon sa repatriation, digitalization, negotiations, these are bilateral labor agreements, uh, programs for OFW kids, uh, reintegration of OFWs, scholarships, protection, and health. Para naman sa Department of Labor and Employment, nagpresenta ng context, mandate, structure, and role in the socioeconomic agenda, program priorities and strategic linkages, at saka ways forward. Uh, they will discuss the details later on, uh, possibly next week, for the specifics of their plans and programs. Okay. Ngayong araw na ito, kasama namin para magpresenta ng kanilang uh, programa, si DILG Secretary Benhar Abalos, DOJ Secretary Pwede bang nickname na lang? Boying Remulia. <laughs> Nagpaalam muna ako, siyempre. DSWD Secretary, hindi po si Sir Erwin. Sir Erwin Tulfo, Chief PNP General Rodolfo Asurin Jr., NBI Chief Medardo de Lemos, Homeland Ricardo Navalta, our UN Envoy, Mrs. Nikki Teodoro. And of course, <laughs> cheat mate ko. Secretary Ivan John Uy of the DICT. Thank you, Secretary. Okay, for the opening uh, presentation, will be our Secretary of the Interior and Local Government, Secretary Benhar Abalos. Maraming salamat, Secretary Trixie, at magandang hapon po sa lahat ng mga nanonood and of course sa ating mga media partners. No? Kaya ho kami nagkaroon ngayon ng uh, joint press con. Kung titignan nyo, ito'y interagency. Ito'y talagang pakakaisa ng gobyerno laban dito sa cyber pornography or, or exploitation of children. No? Dahil hindi maganda ang nangyayari rito at eh, in fact, uh, yung record ng Pilipinas ay hindi maganda sa buong mundo. Ano ba itong uh, online exploitation of children? No? Ano itong mga batas na ito? Dalawa po iyan. Ito yung Republic Act No. 9775 o yung Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009. At ito yung Republic Act No. 92008 o yung Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act. No? So, dalawang ba ba batas ang ating pagbabasihan dito. Next, please. So, anong ibig sabihin ng online sexual exploitation of children? Kung titignan natin ang batas, primarily ito'y production. No? Just the mere production for the purpose of online publication of sexual abuse or exploitation of a minor no? in exchange for compensation. So, ito yung, yung, yung sinasabi natin, online sexual exploitation. On the other hand, ano naman ibig sabihin ng child pornography? Any representation, visual, audio, or written, combination thereof of electronic, mechanical, digital, optical, magnetic, etc., of child engaged or involved in real or simulated explicit sexual activity. No? So, naka-define po lahat ito. Sumunod, tignan natin, anong pagkakaiba nitong online sexual exploitation of children against child pornography law? So, yung isa, yung on online sexual, pinoprohibit ng sexual exploitation, act of exploitation, and when victim is a child, no threat, force, or coercion, basta bata ito, hindi mo na kailangan takutin pa o coerce. So, ako'y Nananawagan sa lahat, ha? nakasabi sa batas, basta ito'y bata. Hindi mo na kailangan takuti pa. Need to be proven. Only the fact of exploitation. Yun lang kailangan. Ano naman child pornography? Ang pinoprohibit dito ang media itself. Ano ibig sabihin nun? 
any act related to the creation or production, sale, or distribution, broadcast, or promotion, use, or possession of child pornography. So, klaro na po sa atin, no? ito'y talaga para proteksyonan ang mga bata labas exploitation at as child pornography. Ngayon, ang tanong rito, ano ba mga data natin sa trafficking of persons? Next, please. Ito ang mga data natin ngayon, mawula 2017 hanggang 2022. Andiyan po nakasaad ang operation conducted, ang number of faces uh, filed, ang under investigation, and of course, number of convicted persons. Next, please. Ito namang sumunod na data ay yung data sa child pornography magula 2016 hanggang 2022. So kung titignan ninyo, out of 103 cases, ang na-file ay 67, ang nasarado ay tatlo sa kasong ito. No? Next please. Bakit importante ito? Bakit ganong kahalaga na makikita ninyo halos lahat ng ahensya ng gobyerno no, na may kinalaman talaga sa hustisya ng dirito ngayon? Pati of course si Ma'am Nikki sa United Nations. Napaka-importante nito dahil ito ang epekto sa mga bata. no? Kasi iniisip nila, camera lang yan. Sabi nga kayo na sa akin ni Sec. Erwin, yung iba pinapakita, walang ulo. But then, matindi ang epekto sa bata nito. At ito nakalagay rito, aside from the fact that it violates the rights of the children, of course, marami pang iba. Feeling of shame, unworthiness, etc. Withdrawal and isolation, marami po epekto ito. Next, please. So ngayon, Ano ang initiatives ng PNP laban sa child pornography? So, bukod sa ginagawa nila mga investigasyon, mga panguhuli, pagpapahal ng kaso, sila ay nag meron silang cooperation now with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, yung mga aling police program, MOA sa iba-ibang ano, and conduct of lectures, etc. Ano naman ang initiatives ng DILG laban sa trafficking in persons and child pornography? Nakasaad po lahat yan. Bukod doon sa, tandaan nyo, ang, ang uh, DILG ay kasama namin ng kapulisahan po rito. No? So, bukod dito ay meron din kami iniimbestigahan lahat, pinafalang kaso, meron din kami mga cooperation sa ibang interagency. No? Next, please. So, ano ang mga rekomendasyon na gagawin pa at dapat pa namin gawin? Of course, kailangan pag-iktingan natin. Kaya andito si Secretary Ivan Uy. Dahil ito'y kakaiba, ito'y uh, technical, no? kailangan mag-procure kami. Titignan namin anong benchmark namin, kung okay na ba kami ngayon, no? okay na ba o kailangan pa bang gandahan pa namin itong software namin para sa online investigation namin. Of course, yung koordinasyon sa mga local government units, no? capacity building hanggang barangay level. Dapat katulong natin ang mga tao sa ibaba rito. Hindi po pwede ito mas magiging maganda ang resulta kung tulong-tulong ang bawat isa. Lahat po ito, dilagay ko nalang dito. No? At uh, uh, andyan po mga rekomendasyon namin. Pasensya na at marami pa hong magsasalita. Ang gusto ko lang sab uh, sabihin ay makikita nyo kano kami kaseryoso rito, ganong kadami ang ahensyang lalabang po rito. Tulungan nyo po kami rito. Maraming salamat po. Um, next to speak, uh, Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia. Thank you. Magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat. Isa pong uh, uh, maulan na hapon, ngunit uh, tuloy po ang trabaho natin lahat. Kasama ko po ngayon ang aking mga kasama sa kabinete, uh, Secretary Erwin Tulfo, Secretary Benher Abalos, Secretary Trixie Angeles, Secretary Ivan Uy, at ang inyong lingkod, Kasama rin po natin dito ang author ng Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009, si Special Envoy Nikki Prieto uh, Chodoro, na kasama ko noon sa Kongreso. At ngayon ay kasama rin natin dito sa bulwagang ito ang uh, Chief ng Philippine National Police, uh, Chief Azurin, at uh, ang NBI Chief natin, National Bureau of Investigation Chief uh, Luigi de, de Lemos, at uh, marami pa ho kami rito ang iba pang kasama at kasama ang uh, homeland uh, mula sa Amerika. Ang layo rin po namin dito upang uh, kaya nagsama-sama rito ay eh, upang iparamdam sa mamamaya natin ang pangangailangang sugpuin natin ang 
mga krimen na ginagawa sa ating kabataan, sa pamamagitan ng internet at sa pamamagitan mismo ng uh, face-to-face na pangyayari. At ito po ay takarumal-dumal na krimen na ginagawa sa ating kabataan. At uh, ang pagsama po sa amin dito ng law enforcement agencies natin ay isa lang pong uh, hudyat na talagang hindi ho talaga tayo papayag na manatili itong ganito sa ating bansa sapagkat uh, hindi nyo na itatanong marahil uh, napakasakit aminin ngunit tayo po ang nangunguna sa buong mundo dito sa larahang ito ng, ng exploitation of children, no? sexual exploitation of children. At dapat po tumigil na to At uh, ang aming pagkasama dito ay isa hong, isa hong uh, pakiusap rin sa inyong lahat na makiisa kayo sa ating gobyerno sa pagsugpo ng karumal-dumal na krimen na, nasa, na nasasakop sa mga gawain ito laban sa ating kabataan. At uh, yung po, sana po ay uh, makiisa kayo sa amin dito at uh, marami ho ritong uh, kailangan makiisa ang uh, internet service providers, ang telcos, uh, ay sana ay makiisa rin po sa ating lahat Uh, kasama rin ho rito ang mga uh, malalaking kumpanya ng internet na, na dapat makiisa na wag na hong uh, paritiliin ang ganitong gawain at sila po ay huwag ho silang uh, papagamit sa mga ganitong karumaldumal na gawain at uh, hindi lang po yan at uh, Marami pa hong uh, mga taong kinakailangan managot sa ganitong gawain. Marami hong sa, sa mga pangyayaring ito ay kasabwat ang mga magulang ng mga bata na minsan sinasabing wala naman daw sakit na nangyayari sa bata. Hindi po ganon. Ang ideya mismo nito ay napakasama at uh, hindi dapat ito pinanatili, pabayaang manatili sa ating lipun, lipunan. Uh, mamaya na po ako masasagot ng mga tanong Uh, ngunit uh, ang, ang presence po rito ng NBI at PNP na kasama po namin lahat dito ay isa pong talagang uh, senyales na isang malaking, uh, isang malaking pagtugon ito sa hamon ng online sexual exploitation of children at saka exploitation of children proper mismo. Uh, kasama ko rito si Marahil, uh, pwede na po natin sa uh, si Secretary Erwin Tulfo para siya naman po ang mag, ay magsalita dito. Maraming salamat po. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Marahil ang nagtataka ho kayo, meron tayong bisita. We have a visitor from the uh, United States uh, Embassy, the uh, Homeland Security. Uh, katuwang po namin sila, they will be helping us uh, monitoring. Kung uh, lingit po sa kaalaman ho ninyo, pag pumunta ka sa isang website about sa mga bata, yung mga pedophiles sa overseas, makikita nyo ho doon Nakaramihan ng mga bata, bagamat walang mga mukha, tinatakpan, bineblur, pero pinagsasayaw-sayaw, hubot-hubad yung bata. Ang mga kumukuha pa, unfortunately, the videos are being taken by their own parents at ibinibenta. Now, these pedophiles overseas, tuwan-tuwa naman ho, mabentang-mabenta yung mga batang Pilipino sa mga foreigners. And that's why we have this visitor from the United States uh, who will be helping us also monitor and track. Kasi yung iba, hindi lang ho sa video natutuwa ay pupunta pa ho dito mga foreigner, magpapanggap na turista. Kaya iyan ho, kasama ho natin, they can track, tinatrack ho nila. Hindi lang po from the United States but Australia and European countries. Tama ho sinabi ni Secretary Abalos, malala ho ang problema, number one po tayo. Number one, sa child pornography ang Pilipinas. Ito po yung pinaka-source. The reason is because of poverty siguro. At ang reason din ng mga magulang sa mga social worker namin, eh, hindi naman ho nakikita yung mukha ng bata. Eh. Hindi naman ho sila nasasaktan. Hindi naman ho sila nagagahasa. Pero yung psychological effect po noon sa bata is different at tatatak po buong buhay niya. Paliguan nga lang yung bata ng nanay sa labas ng bahay, mga batang paslit, 6-7 years old, kahit nakapanti lang, hiyang-hiya po yung bata eh. How much more nakukunan ng video? 
And a measly what? Ang bayad po minsan 10,000, 5,000. Tapos hindi naman ho napupunta sa bata 'yon. Iyon ho yung masakit ho doon. Kaya we have to join forces the ILG, the NBI, ang uh, DICT kasi nga po uh, pornography o ito worldwide sa pamagitan po ng internet. Kaya nga we need all the help at panghuli na lamang po uh, before I pass this mic to the to the DI uh, City Secretary. Uh, makiusap lang ho ako sa mga magulang. Mga sir, mga ma'am, hindi nga po nahahawakan yung anak nyo. Hindi nga po kilala ng mga dayuhan na pinapanood yung anak nyo na hubot-hubad. Pero yung impact po noon sa anak ho ninyo. Paano na lang ho kung kayo mismo, nung bata kayo, pinaghubot-hubad na magulang nyo? at pinagsayaw-sayaw dyan. Hindi ho ba masama din sa loob ho ninyo? Yang anak ho ninyo ay hindi po yung kasangkapan para kumita. Yes po, mahirap ho kayo. Gusto niyo itawid yung inyong buhay. Pero hindi po yung bata, not the child to make money for you and your family. Titigil ho nun natin yan kasi pangalawa, pag nahuli po kayo, kaso po ang abutin nyo labag sa batas kulong po yan number two yung bata ho aalagaan na ho ng gobyerno at hindi na ho ninyo makikita yan hanggang sa lumaki for example kung yung anak nyo ay 5, 6, 7, 8 years old nahuli po kayo kustodiya po ng gobyerno namin ho yan uh, kami ho mga ngalaga ho dyan yung CWC namin ang uh, will take care of your children pag-aarali namin yan we will send them to school, feed them, clothe them kasi hindi naman ho ninyo kaya palang alagaan yan pinagkakitaan lang ho ninyo anak ninyo sa so, pakiusap ho namin bago po huli ang lahat bago ho kayo makulong mahuli, makulong eh, kukunin din ho namin yung anak ho ninyo mapapawalay po sa inyo iyan lang ho maraming salamat and good afternoon Next speaker, DICT Secretary Ivan Uy. Magandang hapon po. Um, kami po sa DICT, uh, together with yung attached agency namin, uh, Cybercrime Investigation Coordinating Council, eh, um, are, are extensively cooperating no, with our uh, law enforcement agencies to provide them with all the resources that they need in order to go after itong... Um, itong K criminal activity nito. Um, uh, as explained ni ng mga previous secretaries po natin, eh, talamak po ito at, um, at dahil napakadali pong gamitin ito online, um, malaki yung, yung marketing at malaki yung customer base nila. At uh, dahil dito, eh, talagang um, na nagiging ano po tayo no um, center ng attention ng buong mundo at ito po ay nakakahiya at um, nakakaawa po sa ating mga kabataan um, eventually na mag na na nababrand na, na sila um, habang sila ay lumalaki yung trauma po ang ang sa, sa kabataan so since online ito eh ang mga magulang eh, gumagamit po ng internet upang uh, ma-deliver ma itong mga, mga videos at mga photos ng kanilang mga anak or kanilang mga kamag-anak. Ang iba ko kasi, mga tito, tita, or, or kahit ng mga kapitbahay na gumagawa po nito. At uh, matitrace namin kayo, no? Um, so, warning po um, na ibinigay ngayon ng ating mga um, ahensya ng uh, law enforcement is um, criminal act po ito. At uh, sabi ko ni Secretary Tulfo, uh, makukulong po kayo at matatanggal, uh, mahihiwalay kayo sa inyong mga anak na inabuso ninyo at tinanggalan nyo ng dignidad. At um, ang gobyerno na po ang uh, mag-aalaga sa kanila at magpapalaki sa kanila. At hindi nyo na po makikita inyong mga anak. So, uh, 
pasensya na po kung um, mahuli namin kayo. Um, marami pong paraan at um, at um, once ma ma zero in namin kayo asan yung operations niyo eh kasama rin ho kayo sa blacklisting as a child pornographer as a child abuser sa buong mundo sa buong mundo kaya nandito po ang mga um, ibang ahensya ng mga gobyerno ng ibang uh, ibang ibang bansa dahil international po ang crime na ito hindi ho ito hindi ito local crime na kung ginawa nyo ito, eh dito lang kayo sa Pilipinas uh, mamamarka. Markado po kayo sa buong mundo. At oras na mangyari yan, hindi ho kayo makakahanap ng trabaho, hindi kayo makakatravel dahil every time na mag kukuha kayo ng passport, huhulihin rin ho kayo kahit nasa ang mundo, uh, parte ng mundo kayong pumunta. Iba ho ang level ng criminal act na ito. Hindi ho domestic ito. International. So, kung akala nyo po, eh, kikita kayo ng kaunti dahil sa itong pang-aabuso nyo sa inyong sariling mga kamag-anak, sa inyong sariling mga anak. At um, yung kaunting kikitain nyo po, eh, hindi ho siguro um, sapat upang um, ma mailigtas kayo sa kamay ng bakal ng ating mga ahensya ng gobyerno. At um, as I said po, um, iririsk nyo po ho ba na mabablacklist kayo sa buong mundo? Paano ho kung may intention kayo na mag-travel, may intention kayo na magtrabaho, mag-apply ng trabaho, at markado na po kayo. So, yan po ang, ang, ang um, sir, kaseryoso no, ng, ng itong offense na ito. Maraming salamat po. Next speaker, Philippine uh, Special Envoy to UN, Ms. Niki Teodoro. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I would like to congratulate this panel. It's uh, absolutely amazing because uh, second time ko na mag-serve dito. So this is the second president, the first president was PRRD and now uh, PBBM, no? So this is a very fantastic group because it's united. And for the first time, let me explain. My job is to report in the UN anong nangyayari sa bansa natin. So now, I will be going there in September to announce that we're number one for child trafficking, online pornography. My bill, um, Anti-Child Pornography Act of 2009, that became a law, is something that um, has been modified because it's gotten so bad that we are actually number one. Number one na po kami. In 20, oh, uh, 2011, there was an Australian named Peter Scully who was actually torturing an 18-month-old baby by burning the body parts, sinusunog yung body parts with candle wax, and then nagla-live streaming siya. At that time, 11 years ago, it was $10,000 per live streaming. So yung mga kliyente niya, big time, foreigners. And this went on until 2017. So he was arrested in 2014. He was put in CDO, but he was still doing his kalokohan in, in the jails. So we had to monitor that. And I monitored that with a group of uh, cabinet members of PRRD. And he was finally arrested and charged, life imprisonment. He is the first to be charged, life imprisonment, because ang hiningi namin, na dito siya ma, ma charge sa Pilipinas, because he's hurting our children, our future. He has damaged our future. Those are the Filipino children that are being exploited. And as of 2022, it's up by over 280%. Why? Because it's easy to do. The children were locked up. Nakakuling mga bata kasama ng mga magulang, lola, lola, tita, tito. So may chance sila. Now it's even cheaper. You can do it for 1,000 pesos. So you can imagine how many sites are on right now that it's so easy to get on one site and then catch another site. Kung makuha man yung first site, may second site, may third site, may 100 sites after that. So our job is so difficult. 
we need all of you to participate because they use all the IT, TV, uh, the cell phones, the laptops. They use everything that cannot be traced because they use SIM cards. So we must also monitor and register their SIM cards and our biometrics because we have a problem kasi ngayon na yung mga foreigners, they don't need visas to come to our country. So it's very easy, pasok, labas, pasok, labas, and they never get caught. They get Filipino counterparts to help them get the children, lure them with ice cream, and they come in because some of them are really street children that are not being monitored. Hindi sila na monitor na mga kamag-anak, nasa kalye lang sila. So, bibigyan sila ng candy, bibigyan sila ng pagkain, papasok naman sila sa bahay. At that point, they're literally already jailed. And, and they are made to do sex things para mabenta lang online. And now it's getting so much cheaper that we are number one. Now, isipin lang ninyo, kayo, media kayo, do you want me to tell that to the UN that we're number one for online pornography? Because I have to report. I will be reporting this in September to the UN. So, I'm very embarrassed. So I'm very proud of this team right now because this team is in sync. But we need the media, we need, we need the social networking of everyone to stop this because it's so lucrative. It's a billion dollar industry. Billion, billion na makukuha nila. But once you get caught and charged, you are charged internationally. And that's my job to go to the UN and tell them our problems so they can help us, suggest to us how to help us. In fact, right now, UK National Crime Agency, NCA, and International Justice Mission, IJM, uh, the Philippine law enforcement agencies are receiving training through advanced investigating workshops organized and coordinated by IGM, that's UK-based, and cooperative increasingly with financial services provided to investigate OCSEA uh, cases. So we are getting international help. But the problem is it's not fast enough. It has to be faster. It has to be faster by our help, not by foreign help. We have to help ourselves because we are damaging the future of our beloved Philippines. So pakiusap lang sa inyo, kung ayaw ninyong masira ang bansa ninyo, you report the parents, you report anyone that is hurting our children, or you are messing with the future, our future. Kami on the board, we're the generation protecting the next generation. So it's our job, all our jobs, to make sure we take care of the future of this country. Thank you and good afternoon po. Next speaker, um, U.S. Um, uh, Homeland Security Attaché, uh, Ricardo Navalta. Good afternoon. Um, I would like to thank the, uh, the President Marcos. I would like to also thank the cabinet members, secretaries here, all the panelists on here. It's, uh, I've been here in the Philippines for four years now, and this is a remarkable time. This is a remarkable uh, group of panelists to bring together this kind of working group to combat child exploitation. It was very challenging hearing uh, what she had to say because uh, as the blood of a Filipino and an American-born citizen, uh, I have a lot of hope for both the United States and the Philippines. Uh, we at the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Homeland Security Investigations, we are full bank, fully behind the Philippines in combating uh, child exploitation. We are here to develop pr best practices, help develop programs to not only stop foreigners or uh, from the U.S. or from other countries from coming into the country to have access to Filipino children, but also educating the population as well. There are a lot of programs that the United States has that we will uh, provide information on and hopefully be able to educate the community, teachers, parents, uh, everyone that we can. Uh, the 
the United States has been in a memorandum of cooperation with the Philippine National Police since 2018. That uh, cooperation is based on a transnational criminal investigative unit that we work together side by side to combat transnational crime, transnational sexual misconduct, and child exploitation. We currently are in the process of adding the National Bureau of Investigation, as well as many of the other agencies, Bureau of Customs, Bureau of Immigration, uh, the uh, DSWD into this program in hopes that we can work together to reduce the number of cases that come from the U.S. and foreign countries. We also work alongside with our counterparts from all the different countries, such as the U.K., Australia, the Aussies, um, all of them. We also do a lot of training with them in order to help uh, facilitate and better uh, prosecute these kind of offenders as well. So um, I'm very excited and I'm very uh, proud to be included in, into this working group. And uh, I look forward to hopefully a, a better choice of conversation at the UN uh, for uh, the improvements that we'll make with this panel. So thank you very much. Um, NBI Chief uh, Director Medardo De Lemos. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Ang NBI po ang investigative arm ng uh, Department of Justice. At sa pamumuno ng aming bagong sekretary, sinabi po niya na ang priority cases, isa sa mga priority cases na dapat pagtina, pagtuunan ng pansin ng NBI ang OSEC, Online Sexual Exploitation of Children nais naming iparating sa ating mga kababayan that since 2019 ang NBI po ay nag nakasecure ng 29 convictions sa OSEC cases. Meron po tayo dahil ito nga ay online, meron din tayong iniimbestigahan na child pornography at since 2019 nagkaroon po tayo ng 46 active investigations sa child pornography. Ang mga initiatives po ng NBI ay nag- uh, Tatag, nag-establish kami ng aming ATRAD, yung Anti-Human Trafficking Division sa, sa ating headquarters dito sa Manila. At nagka-cluster din tayo ng ating mga human trafficking investigation groups in the three islands, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Nagkaroon din tayo ng mga designated contact persons pagdating sa sexual yung, online sexual human trafficking. Uh, para malaman din ng karamihan, meron din tayong monitoring, online monitoring ng mga OSEC cases. At uh, noon ngang July, uh, naging resulta ng ating monitoring na ito, nagkaroon tayo ng isang successful operation sa Cebu. Kung il ilang mga kabataang lalaki naman ang naging biktima ng uh, OSEC uh, cases na ito. Kami ay nakikipagtulungan sa lahat ng ahensya sa ating bansa, sa ating, ating mga counterparts dito sa ating bansa at mga counterparts din natin sa ibang bansa na siyang nagbibigay din sa atin ng mga impormasyon tungkol dito sa mga OSEC cases. Uh, nakikipag uh, tulungan din tayo sa ating mga payment centers kung saan pinapadala itong pera na bayad sa ating mga biktima. Kasi ang uh, Pilipinas po ay Ito ang mga biktima, hindi po tayo ang predators. Ang mga predators po ay nasa ibang bansa. At tinutulungan din tayo ng ating mga counterparts. Totoo po yun, sa UK, sa Netherlands, sa US, tsaka sa Australia. Uh, kaya katulad ng kahilingan natin dito, ng buong team na ito, kung meron din po kayo mga impormasyon na makakatulong para mapabilis ang investigasyon, uh, meron po kaming hotline din sa NBI na maaaring tawagan. Maraming salamat po. Next, uh, Chief PNP General Rodolfo Azurin Jr. Uh, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. So, in behalf po ng, sa pamamuno po ng aming uh, DLG Secretary, si Sec. Uh, Benhar Abalos, ang inyo pong kapulisan sa buong Pilipinas, 
ay handa po na tumulong po sa atin pong uh, adhikain na matigil na po ang, ang mga child exploitation po, lalo lalo na po yung mga batang-bata po na nabibiktima po uh, nitong uh, online sexual abuse and exploitation of children. Sa datos po ng inyong kapulisan, uh, since 2019, uh, we were able to receive 378 uh, referrals po and then we were able to conduct about 250 uh, police operations uh, arrests were made and we were able to file 225 cases against the perpetrators so our comparative data po uh, from august from january to august 2021 last year meron po tayong 43 cases na or 43 operations na kinandak. And for this year po, from January to August 2022, meron po tayong 29 operations that were conducted by your PNP. Uh, we were able to file a case uh, last year from January to August 2021, 25 cases po. And for this year, out of the operations we conducted, we were able to file uh, 20 cases for the complaints we received from January to August 2022. For the cases solved po na nagawa namin from January to August 2021, we were able to solve 11 cases po. And this year, from January to August 2022, apat na po yung nasosol po namin. And for the number of cases cleared, last year 25 and for this year uh, 20 po on the conviction po uh, since 2016 uh, since we started po yung atin pong operation uh, against child abuse and trafficking we were able to convict 71 po na uh, mga suspects and yung iba po ay ongoing pa po ang trial so uh, other than that, ang inyo pong kapulisan ay handa po to bring awareness to everyone in the community about the ill effects po nitong child abuse and exploitation. And then we will also organize all sectors in the community to help us by mobilizing everyone po. So ito pong gathering na ito is napakaganda pong umpisa na kung saan uh, lahat po tayo ay hinihikayat na magtulong-tulong po para po sa future nga ng ating mga kabataan. Maraming maraming salamat po. Lastly, um, Ayakat Head, Justice Undersecretary Nicholas T. Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, as we all know, the Interagency Council Against Trafficking was created by the original Traffic Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act or, or A 9208 to coordinate the different agencies in the fight against human trafficking. Online sexual abuse and exploitation of children is a subspecies of human trafficking. Um, the chairperson of the IACAT is Secretary Remulia. The co-chairperson is Secretary Tulfo. Um, they have expressed most of the things that IACAT wants to express, but we just want to take this opportunity to once again thank the national government for, for this opportunity wherein this, this problem of online sexual abuse and exploitation of children can be given more light and solutions to this problem can be considered. At the same time, we'd like to express our appreciation to the administration of President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, as well as the administration of PBBM, for the passage of two key, two key pieces of legislation in this fight against online sexual abuse and exploitation of children and trafficking in persons. These are Republic Act 11862, which further amendment the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act as well as RA 11930, or the Anti-Online Sexual Abuse and Exploitation of Children Act. So with these new pieces of legislation, uh, we believe that IACAT is in, is in a better position to fight OSAEC, as well as other forms of trafficking. Thank you. We are now opening the floor for questions related to online sexual exploitation of children. Marisal Halili, TV5. 
Hi, magandang hapon po. Um, Secretary Abalos, you have uh, presented earlier figures of uh, cases of child pornography and we can see an upward trend since 2016 up to 2022. Number one, where can we attribute the uh, continuous um, increase of cases in the Philippines? We just came from a pandemic, no? Uh, remember, this kind of a crime, sabi nga nila, is that you could just do it in a bedroom, you could do it in a room, with a camera, with no witnesses, just a child who's very innocent. So easy to do it. Alam naman natin during pandemic talagang medyo maraming naghirap, maraming walang trabaho. No? We cannot tell kung ano talagang reason nila. Pero it could be one of the factors kung bakit tumaas ito. But what is important right now is that we're going to put a stop to all of this. We're going to show them, them that uh, we government is really serious about stopping them. Talagang nagkakaisa lahat. May kanya-kanya specialty eh. Uh, kami sa DILG, we're with the LGUs. LGUs means the LG is the interior. Interior is the police, the BFP, the the uh, fire, you know, and uh, the jail, and the women, the Commission on Women, on Youth, and Muslims. And the uh, G is for governance, over governors pababa. So imagine all LGUs gagalaw dito. Of course, you have got the DSWD with the social welfare. And not only that, Ivan, itong expert namin sa technology, dal, kailangan namin talagang ma mahuli ang, ang lahat na ito through this uh, technology. And of course, and itong prosecution arm namin, ang DOJ, ito talaga magkukulate lahat ng, ng kaso. Not mentioning the fact that we have our friends from the United Nations, si Ambassador Nikki, and of course, Mr. Navalta of the homeland, no? Importante yun. Dahil sa abroad, I, I've, hindi ko na babanggit yung pangalan niya, I've talked with the mayor sa isang probinsya. Ang laking tulong na nakatulong sa kanya ang homeland. Nahuli nila. No? Pero ito sinasabi niya sa akin, alam mo, Benar, ang masaklap, nung nahuli namin, pinuntahan ako ng magulang eh. Sabi sa akin, sino na magbibigay buwan-buwan ng pera sa amin? I think they're getting 20,000 or 30 a month. Sino na magbibigay? Galit pa yung magulang doon sa, sa mayor at, at nahuli yung tao. I imagine that. Kaya tama ang sinasabi ni Secretary Irwin na baka iniisip ng tao dahil it's just a camera, wala namang nangyayari, kinukunan, etc. Pero hindi, mali. Bata ito eh. No? Y yung panghihiya sa bata hanggang kalakihan niya yan. These are things na talagang di mo ramdam pero paglaki niya yung, yung kahihiyan sa batang ito. So, sana mamulat po tayo lahat dito. No? So, yun lang po. Uh, what is important here is that uh, nakakaisa kami dito, ang galing ng NBI, no? ang PNP, nanjan. So, the whole department, wag kinalaman, taga full force po kami dito. Thank you. Thank you, Sek. Um, you, Sek, you have mentioned earlier na kailangan ni amend yung ating law on child pornography. What particular provisions must be amended? Amended na siya. Uh, um, uh, yun, yun, on, yun anti osaic law effectively amended the anti-child pornography law. Ano po yung binago doon? Ah, madaming Kino binago. Tingin ko yung pinaka-importante okay. amendment dyan ay yung pag-identify ng osaic as its own crime, giving it its own definition, broadening, broadening the scope of osaic to cover those developments in child pornography that, were, uh, that, that, that came about because of changes in technology. Thank you, sir. Kat Domingo, ABS-CBN. Good afternoon, sirs and ma'ams. For the cabinet secretaries, do we have data if there are particular hot spots in the Philippines that produce these illegal content? And do we also have data on which nationalities are the biggest consumers of these types of content? Actually, we tried to trace this before. Nung, kung iilaw yung buong mapa ng Pilipinas, no, kung may ilaw sa bawat lugar, buong Pilipinas meron eh. So, across, across all regions nangyayari ito. It's happening everywhere. Tapos, uh, ano yung isa pa? Sir, yung nationalities na top consumers? Uh, nationalities, uh, wag na natin pag-usapan ngayon yung nationalities. Uh, better that way, no? Kasi baka mamaya sabihin na nag-aano nag, tayo sa uh, 
uh, we're, we're singling out some some nationalities. Secretary, even if uh, kahit regional lang po, is it European, American, uh, Australian, Asian? A lot, a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of European European participation here. Uh, second question for for, uh, um, for Representative Teodoro. Now, what seems to be the problem? What do you think is the biggest uh, is the biggest reason why the problem exacerbated, despite the fact that a law was already passed more than a decade ago? Um, several things. One is because it's easy to come to the country; don't need a visa. Uh, two, lockdown played a big part of parents actually, uh, may I say, prostituting their children online, marketing, sorry, marketing their children online for profit. Then um, the fact that it's easy to put up a site, you put one, you can have 10 at the same time. So it's technology that's made it easier for, uh, for these perpetrators to market their children or our children and it's gotten easier and it's gotten more lucrative. So the lockdown played a big part and now we have to play a bigger part in protecting our children by reporting it immediately. As you see in this panel, we're covering all bases. We're complete in this panel, so we're covering all bases. Last question for my and for Secretary Uy, what is the DICT doing um, to address the problem? Will it only be a matter of blocking certain IP addresses, certain websites, or is the problem so pervasive that you have to monitor, let's say, Facebook marketplaces or even chat groups and apps? Actually, we're, we're doing everything. Uh, we're covering all, all aspects, whether it's social media, whether, um, yes, and also, um, how, how they're marketing it um, on websites um, and at the same time um, tracing the, the following the money trail because um, these all go to, to a central um, um, payment uh, group that um, actually collects this money. So, but most of these are located abroad. So we're working with um, AMLA, we're working with with our international partners um, to locate really where, uh, where where the payments are being made, and then um, once uh, we, we we track them, then uh, we we work with uh, these international agencies on how to uh, stop the money flow. So long as there is um, demand, uh, the supply always um, comes up. No, um, it's a similar issue with drugs. Uh, may demand so we we tackle it all all sides uh, we work with our international uh, partners uh, to to cut off the demand but at the same time we here on the supply side have to make sure that um, uh, we do not provide um, easy access to that supply um, because uh, DICT is a uh, task to provide connectivity to all areas, um, we are detecting that the more connectivity we provide, um, the more opportunities um, arise. No? And the opportunities um, can be for good or for bad. Um, they are able, because of connectivity, they're able to engage in better e-commerce. They're able to do uh, better communications. But the criminals also exploit um, that connectivity, that um, access to 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 the people so we also have to um, push for better online education um, as the content um, once we deploy more connectivity not only making them aware protecting themselves against cyber crime but also educating them on the on the um, uh, detrimental effect of um, of, of child exploitation using this medium. Next question, Celerina Monte. Good afternoon. Um, I just want to clarify uh, some of the resource speakers mentioned that uh, the Philippines is uh, number one in this um, problem um, on online exploitation, sex, sex abuse. Um, may we know which study are you referring to and 
kailan yung study na yun? Yung basis ko nun. Ano yan? Uh, that's data called from different international agencies. Um, actually, ano to, alam na ng buong mundo to halos. Eh. The, the, the law enforcement agencies around the world know this. That uh, tayo talaga ang favorite place ng mga, ng mga ganito. The, the perverts who, who like uh, exploiting the children. Ano yan? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's not a source of pride. It's a source of shame. That's why we want to end this. Tapat tumigil na to. Uh, payment systems, anti-money laundering will be there against you. Uh, telcos, uh, we expect you to put the filters so that uh, many of these transactions do not, do not uh, happen. And if there are, there are people who do not cooperate but uh, have an indirect or indirect participation, we will, we will not hesitate to charge anybody who helped perpetuate a crime of this nature. We will not hesitate to prosecute anybody who, who cooperates directly or indirectly in this nature. Tanda natin, no? What will deter people para umiwas ang tao sa gaw ganitong gawain yung ay isang bagay lang, no? Certainty of punishment na sila'y mahuhuli at sila'y parurusahan. And we will make sure of that. That's why we are here together. This is a statement we're making and uh, for those who will, will insist on, on doing their old ways of, uh, of uh, exploiting our children in, in this heinous manner, well, we're here to, to punish you. We will not allow this to go on further. Sir, um, since when po number one ang Philippines and during the previous administration, uh, the Duterte administration uh, really focused on war on drugs. So this time... Prior to the pandemic... That, uh, are you saying that the Marcos administration will be um, declaring a war on this online sexual abuse and exploitation of yes, children. Yes, we are declaring a war on this. So, kaya magkakasama kami dito ngayon sa kwartong ito. Uh, uh, lahat na ng pwedeng gawin ng bansa para dito. 100% of law enforcement is here as well as 100% of jails and correction facilities are here. The BJMP and the BUCOR under us are here to make sure that we have a reserved place for those who insist on doing what they do. No? So law enforcement and jail are, is here with, with us, as well as the, the people, the, the, the DICT, the NBI, the PNP, their cybercrime units are here, uh, they will be there for anybody who still will insist on perpetuating this crime. Last, last question on my part. Um, uh, see, Sec Tulfo will answer your question also. Let's add into that, ma'am. Um, uh, this problem has been ongoing. Unfortunately, the focus uh, was on pandemic for the past two years, uh, yung mga lockdowns and all, in, in the news. Now it's in the media too. Naka-focus tayo sa pandemic. We focused on war on drugs. We focused on graft and corruption. We left out, us in the media, itong child pornography, sex exploitation. But it has been going on. Yung mga investigative programs sa TV, they've been dealing this. As a matter of fact, ABS-CBN before was already dealing this 10 years ago, the, before they were shut down. TB5 was dealing with this because I was part of it, that, that, that program. So matagal na itong problema, hindi lang na-address because we are so uh, uh, busy with other problems. Yun nga, pandemic, then... Uh, war on drugs, meron pa tayong uh, terrorism sa Mindanao, and then we have graft and corruption. Ito yung mga issues na natatabunan siya. Pero it, is also, it has been there, and it's a big problem, pero hindi nabibigyan na pansin. Kaya right now, uh, this administration is keen and very serious in stopping this. So tama si uh, Secretary uh, Rimulya, tama si Secretary Abalos, and, and everybody here in this room. We are declaring war against this, and this is the time now and here. Last question. Um, do you have any like estimate, or can you quantify like how big is this quote-unquote industry in the Philippines? Well, for it to be number one, malaki ito in the world. Just imagine, kano tayo, kaliit na bansa. 
di ba? Just imagine the problem here right now. At ito yung mga batang walang kalaban-laban. Kaya yun nakakagalit dito. No? So, di ba? Basta this is now a statement. On this day, we're going to make a statement. Quantify. Hmm? Yeah. Quantify, well, it's, it's hard to give numbers. It's hard to give numbers right now. But the mere fact we're number one, that speaks for itself. Next question, Vince Lopez, Manila Standard. Um, for DOJ Secretary, Secretary Remulia, good afternoon po. Um, knowing the severity po of the uh, child sexual exploitation here in the Philippines, will the Justice Department uh, consider the sexual exploitation for children be a part of the heinous crime? It is a heinous crime. It is a heinous crime. And... Uh, we have we have a cyber we have a cyber unit in the DOJ to, to really take care of this. We we have uh, at least two task forces uh, that are organized for this purpose, and uh, we we've actually uh, early in July we met about this already. I met with the NBI already about about this matter early in July, so we've been quietly organizing. So this announcement is just uh, there to, uh, because. Uh, I, I, did had, I had a discussion with uh, Secretary Abalos and Secretary Tulfo and Secretary Ivan, and we said that uh, it's better that we have a common front and we, we have a, a one concerted effort together. Uh, we have to stop this. We have to stop this. Um, for the ICT SEC, um, sec, uh, good afternoon. Din po. Um, Makikipag-coordinate po ba ang DICT sa National Intelligence Coordinating Agency to locate these uh, mga locations na may child exploitations na nangyayari? Actually, we're, we're coordinating with all the agencies po, um, as well as the telcos. Because the telcos dyan po ang gateway, no? Na pumapasok nun. So, all. But um, the DICT itself um, has uh, its capabilities. To, to do this. So, um, Nika would probably be dealing more with the national security, national security issues instead of criminal investigation. But um, we, we share, we share data because um, some of them, um, there are resources that are available on the different agencies um, that can be utilized in order to track down um, these uh, offenders. Thank you. Jinky Batikados, IBC Philippine. Uh, good afternoon po, ladies and gentlemen. Ang tanong ko maaaring sagutin ng kahit na sino pong secretary, um, sinabi natin that we are on, on war on this one po. So, alam din natin, sabi ni Secretary Irwin kanina, that this has been a long problem na sinosolve po natin. Meron po ba tayong bagong strategy or approach na maaaring natin gawin to actually help solve this crime? Maliban doon sa ginagawa na natin noon pa man. I think this, uh, the, the new thing about this is the comprehensive approach to it. Uh, AMLA is there. Uh, the, the DICT is here. Uh, we, we are asking the telcos to put the filters into their systems. Uh, we, we're, not, we're not leaving any stone unturned. Uh, this comprehensive approach, I think, the, the new thing about it, this comprehensive approach is the one that will get things done. Sir, meron po bang marching orders sa inyo si PB, uh, si Presidente para uh, mag-curve ito? Binigyan ba tayo ng, ng somehow mandate or hanggang kailan? Un understood na to eh. Uh, this was prior to our, our going into office in July, in June 30. This was discussed before already. Thank you, Secretary. One na lang, Dale. Um, from the Homeland Security, uh, Manila Attaché, sir. I just would like to ask if somehow, um, aside from the monitoring and your tracking in helping this country to solve this kind of problem, do you have any particular help to extend uh, to the Philippines for this particular solving of crime? Uh, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, this is a global problem, and I think that uh, all countries that can come in and participate in this is going to be a, a very big opportunity for us to really make an impact. Um, we, we obviously, uh, in uh, 2018, 2019, prior to the pandemic, uh, U.S. Homeland Security has a program called iGuardian. And uh, if you go back and you look, you'll find that in General Santos City, uh, we put on an outreach program uh, 
uh, to over 2,000 students, parents, teachers, um, educating them on the dangers of the internet. Uh, there are a lot of different things that also uh, will assist us in this, and such things as uh, the U.S. has uh, the Protect Act of 2003. The Protect Act of 2003 basically says that a U.S. citizen that, that engages in uh, child exploitation anywhere in the world can be held accountable in the United States. That law itself allows us to work alongside our partners here in the Philippines to not only uh, catch the offenders here who are creating the content, but also go back to our country and put handcuffs on them there and arrest them and prosecute them there for the crimes that they committed here. So I think that we will have you know, a lot of programs that will create some of the best practices that we can have in order to combat this here, not only in the Philippines, but globally. You know, that's the impact that this will have and this working group will give uh, to the world uh, in, in focusing in that area. Thank you, sir. Last question for the panel from Nel Maribuho and uh, UNTV. Good afternoon po. Anyone po kasi po dun sa uh, cabinet secretaries. Uh, will you support any proposal regarding the social media registration to effectively track down personalities? engage on or participation in online exploitation social media registration uh, will you push or uh, support any proposal on that there was a law that was passed which required some kind of registration before that was vetoed by president would we go to Delta so there is no law in order to require online registration, there has to be a law. Because otherwise, the Constitution guarantees free speech. So right now, there is no requirement of any online registration. This is without prejudice to any rules uh, pertaining to the various agencies like the DILG and the DOJ, uh, pursuant to whatever directive they will be given law enforcement. Thank you. Before we continue with the briefing of uh, Press Secretary Trixie Angeles, uh, may we ask uh, as, uh, Secretary of Justice Boying Rimulia for his closing statement? Uh, nice to have you. Thank you all for your attention. I hope we can help you to help you to help us to help us in our country as a Filipino Filipino. We can help you to help us to help us. Maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Uh, we are now opening a few questions for um, Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles. Eden Santos, Net25. Uh, Mawalang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, regarding lang po dun sa kung ano bang ginagawa ng paghahanda ngayon ng DSWD dito po sa uh, Bagyong Florita, especially po dun sa relief operations and evacuations, pwede rin po si Secretary Benher Avalos. Thank you po. Madam, bago po i-sagot uh, i ni Sec. Irwin, magpapaalam na po ang ating mga panauhin. So, okay. <laughs> Maraming salamat, Sec. Boy. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Nikki. Nag-message sa akin. Sabi ko, okay, confirm. Okay. Uh, Maraming salamat, Sec. Ivan. Sec Ben Hart. Ay, dito pa pala si Sec. Okay. All right, Sec, Sec Irwin, please. Yeah. Uh, Naka-preposition na ho kasi mga food packs ho natin sa mga regional offices, Region 1 and Region 2. And then, uh, ibinaba na rin po sa mga satellite offices namin, uh, dyan po sa Vigan. Uh, Yung ilang pong LGUs natin from Ilocos Norte, sinundo na po yung mga food packs nila kasi may transportation po sila. Hindi naman po namin kayang dalhin bawat bayan nila. So, napadalhan na po. Pero kanina, na-serve na po namin yung mga residente po, yung ilang mga uh, evacuees. Pero nakauwi na po eh. Uh, as reported to me right around 12 noon, nakauwi na po yung karamihan. Pati yung uh, dalawang uh, family po, nakauwi na rin dito sa Ilocos Norte. Pero gayon pa man, natira na po sila ng pagkain. 
We are closely monitoring po itong region to itong Isabela na currently binabayo po ng signal number 3 na bagyo. So doon po nakabantay ho tayo. We have alerted all our regional offices uh, sa CAR, Region 1, Region 2, and Region 3 are on standby now. Uh, just in case kailangan po ng tulong, aakyat po. Ganun hong ginawa na natin ngayon, may clustering po tayo ng mga regions. So lahat po ng region sa uh, Luzon, magtutulong-tulong po yung pinakamalapit, mag-aayuda like what we did in Abra, ng uh, Lilindol pong Abra, Field Office 1, Region 1 and Region 2, nagdala po ng ayuda. Pero so far right now, yung buong region ng uh, ito pong uh, Luzon Cluster are, are on standby, nakaready. Lalong-lalo na po yung National uh, Resource Operation Center namin, yung pinaka-warehouse po namin sa Pasay, nakaready na rin. Ho. Pero don't worry, ho, we have sufficient, we have over 100,000 food boxes po na naka-standby lang po sa amin sa Regions 1 and 2. Uh, in Region 1 po, dyan sa Ilocos uh, region, meron po kaming... Uh, 20 to 25 million po na AX uh, assistance for individual in crisis na ready din ho. So uh, nakabantay ho kami uh, evacuations ganun din mga evacuation uh, sites na ready na rin with the help of the DI, uh, with the with the local government units. Kasi ang mangyayari ho dito ma'am usually ang napag-usapan ho dito ay ang, ang pinaka uh, first responders po ay LGU they'll be the first one to feed yung kanila po constituents. Well, but we can come in anytime kung if they ask for assistance, sasabihin nila medyo pag 4th class municipality o 5th class hindi po na kaya. Then, papasok po kami. Kaya ho, naka-standby din ho lagi ang instruction ko sa mga regional directors para pwede po kami mag-augment. Kung hindi man po mag-augment, kami mismo ang pupunta na doon sa area para tulungan po sila mapakain po yung mga kababayan natin, ma'am. Uh, so Sir, kasi we heard, uh, bago pa man po ito, di ba, uh, ito na yung binabanggit ng Pangulong uh, BBM na pinangangambahan niya na uh, yung nilindol na uh, mga lugar, special sa Abra, ay eh, kabilang po doon sa mga lugar ngayon na dadaanan ng bagyo, if I'm not mistaken. So yung pong uh, flash flood and landslide ay uh, naka, nag, uh, nagbabadya po yan. Um, meron po bang uh, ginagawang hakbang ang uh, DILG? sa pamagitan po ng uh, mga LGUs, uh, LGUs, mga official, mga local executives para naman po uh, maiwasan na magkaroon pa ng mga mas uh, uh, malalang insidente po ng flash flood and fl uh, landslide. Well, um, actually, na-foresee na po ito noon. Ano? Uh, Kamukha na sinabi niyo, sinabi ng Presidente. Kaya na ho, galing kami sa cabinet meeting. Uh, ito nga ang binili niya. So in short, uh, talagang naka-monitor, naka-identify na po ang mga evacuation centers dito. And uh, just like uh, Secretary of DSWD, we are in constant touch uh, with our local government unit partners no, na nasa baba po. Uh, lahat naman po ito, may in place na po itong uh, mga gagawin po rito. Uh, of course, andyan na yung pagkain, andyan na yung tubig, lahat po iyan, no, naka, nakahanda na rin. Mamonitor po namin uh, hanggang mamaya. Aad ko lang pala yung kanila lang, no? <clears throat> Ngayon ko lang pinakuha yung topic. Just, just, just so, <clears throat> makasigurado lang ako yung topic natin kanina. Kasi it's about child pornography, no? Or child trafficking. But on the lighter side naman, yung, basta pag-usapan yung trafficking as a whole, hindi child trafficking, the Philippines is number one in the tier one. Ibig sabihin ng tier one, isa sa pinaka maganda ito. For the seventh consecutive year, the country maintained the top classification on Tier 1 ranking in the annual report of the State Department of the United States. Okay, According to the State Department, countries and territories under Tier 1 have governments that fully meet the minimum standards of the U.S. Trafficking Victims Protection of 2000 in eliminating human trafficking. Bakit ko sinasabi ito? Kung nakafocus sa isang bagay, kayang-kaya eh. No? So yung kaya sinasabi nga kanina ni Boeing, ito, it's just that uh, mafocus lang natin ito. Sigurado matatanggal natin na itong sa child pornography and of course itong uh, 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 child uh, trafficking na ito. Okay? Sige. Uh, last question, Ivan Mayrina. Secretary Sige, Angeles, ma'am. Uh, may we know what came out of the meeting of the President with the newly installed officials of the SRA? Uh, we will be making an announcement later on. He did discuss the ongoing crisis. 
-hmm. But uh, that's the extent that we can reveal the details. Remember that these officials just swore in. So immediately, right after, immediately after that, he convened mm -hmm. the, the group uh, to apprise them of the situation, get uh, recommendations, and plan a course of action. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, uh, mm. may we get the palace statement on the on the privileged speech of uh, Congressman Libanan, the minority leader. Ang sabi po niya dapat, in his words, to curtail the cartel, we need a full-time chief executive and a full-time agriculture secretary. Ano po masasabi ng palasyo dito? We have no reaction to that. Um, there are also other questions pertaining to supposedly the testimonies that are being given during the course of the legislative investigation. We will not comment on those as well because it is in the hands of the committee or the, the, the legislature which is conducting the investigation. We'll wait for it to complete it, the investigation. As to the raids in warehouses, mm -hmm. inaasahan po ba natin magpapatuloy ang mga ito? Yes, patuloy po. Thank you very much. I, by the way, they're the exercise of visitorial powers. Exercise of visitorial powers. That is noted. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs> Maraming salamat, Press Secretary Trixie Cruz Angeles, DILG Secretary Ben Her Abalos, and DSWD Secretary Erwin Tufo. Maraming Tufo. salamat po. Uyingat kayo ha, malakas ang ulan. <laughs> Maraming salamat, malakas niyang press corps.